Hi and welcome to another question of today. My name is Iris Claassen and today I'm not filming anywhere <laughs> exciting. It's Sunday, I'm filming from home. I'm just trying to make a quick video so I can go outside and get a little bit of sunlight before the sun goes down. You know, winter in Sweden, it gets really dark and it's just around the corner. So try to get as much daylight as possible. Now, for those of you who haven't watched this video series before or read some of my blog posts we call the stupid question of the day, I just want to make sure that you know that I am being sarcastic. So in case you're like, whoa, I'm offended, uh, that is not a stupid question. Actually, it's a fantastic question. How do you dare calling it stupid? I am being sarcastic. The story behind why I'm calling it stupid question of the day uh, is on the blog on the right hand side of my blog there's a URL there you can click on it and you can have a little bit of a read. But now let's proceed to the question. The question today is in regards to the GDPR and if you're not from a country that is a part of the European Union maybe you don't even know what GDPR stands for. Now GDPR stands for the General Data Protection Regulation. It's a mouthful and it comes in effect next year May I believe if I remember correctly and it's a set of rules and regulations that aim to protect an individual's rights in regards to how data and particularly sensitive data is being handled by other companies. Now um, I work as a developer for a startup called Construct and the GDPR is going to be a pain in the ass for us. I, as a person, as an individual, I'm very happy about the GDPR, but as a developer, I also understand the challenges that comes with it. And, you know, I'm not going to rant on too long about it, but some of the things that they require are going to be a little bit difficult to implement. And I look forward to seeing how other companies, in particular those that have software as a service uh, type of services, how they are going to solve some of the requirements. But let's move on to the question. The question is, if you as a company, you don't host your services in a country within the European Union, but you have individuals that are using these services, do you still have to follow the GDPR? Yes, you have to. Now generally, I'd say that the GDPR, the rules and regulations, there are pretty good guidelines anyway, even if they weren't required. So it's a, it's a good place to start. And before the GDPR, we still had a lot of laws that looked very similar, but they would vary a lot from country to country and it could get really complicated and it was difficult for an individual to know what, what their rights were. The previous uh, reg set of regulations they had, I believe is from 1995, which is really, <laughs> which is old and a lot has happened during that, since that. So I guess it was time for an updated version and that's why we have it. So yes, uh, it looks like you have to, and that's good. Now I just want to give you an example of some of the things, um, some of the requirements. Um, and please do have more of a read, and I will make more videos about this. I mean, <laughs> I'm in no way an expert. <laughs> Basically, I'm just trying to look up answers as best as I can. Um, but yes, one of the things are how you manage mass emailing as a company. Now, as a company, you usually have two types of emails that you send out to your customers and clients. You have transactional emails and then you have marketing emails. Transactional emails are emails such as, oh, I've, you've reset your password or somebody reset your password. And then you have marketing emails. Marketing emails are, buy this, buy that, and usually has a bunch of trackers in the email so we can see you know how much time a user is spending reading something and what they're clicking on and yeah just you know to see hey is this even working and actually I, I do wonder is marketing do marketing emails still work or I don't know I just sometimes I assume that most people are just like me which I know they aren't God, let's hope they're not that I basically just everything goes into spam everything everything I have so much emails I, I really don't want to have more now something that is changing uh, in the G with the GDPR in regards to marketing emails is that you have to be able to prove that a user has consented to you sending these emails to him or her 
Now, this means that if you bought off lists of emails from some other company and you're like cold emailing, you can't do that anymore because you can't prove that the user consented. And if you have a database with all your users, you still have to be able to prove that, yes, they, they've said yes to receiving these marketing emails. And you, know, you usually want to even do this as a two-step process that they verify you know, that they give consent twice. So first they'll tick a box and then they'll also you know, receive an email where they have to accept it even one more time. I don't know, it's, it's a lot of hassle to go through to just send marketing emails. But uh, in the GDPR, we really want to make sure that a person has agreed and you can't, uh, you, there's nothing such as implicit consent anymore in regards to marketing emails. And I've, I've started seeing these changes in effect already now, which is uh, really interesting and oh, my email inbox is very happy about. Now this this with the emails is not going to be a problem where I work. We don't do marketing emails at all. We only have transactional emails, uh, but maybe we will have marketing emails with time, but we haven't implemented that part yet in uh, our system. So I guess we can have that in the back of our mind. And, and there are, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of, um, integration software will provide like uh, consent boxes that you can use and sort of uh, simplify the whole consent process. So there are some solutions in regards to how to manage it. But I just wanted to give you an example of something that's uh, changing. And I will cover more in future videos. Now I'm going to try to go outside and get a little bit of sunlight. So I'm going to leave my little cave at home and enjoy a relaxing cafe coding session. I'm working on a video tutorial actual, actually uh, on using the Azure Cognition services, in particularly their face uh, detection uh, API, which is really cool. But more about that later. I've got some code to write and some sunlight to catch. Have a freaking fantastic week. And if you've got questions or answers, feel free to contact me. Take care. Mwah.